Hi, everybody. Um, sorry to keep you waiting around for the last several days uh, while discussions have been going on off and on. Um, I wanted to just give you some brief comments about where the situation uh, sits as of uh, today, as of tonight, um, and go from there. In a session which took place about an hour or so ago, right before, I guess, Bill Daly came down. I may have spent a few minutes with, with uh, all of you. Um, the players responded comprehensively to the various issues which have been the focus of the discussion over the last several meetings. We had expressed the view that previously we didn't think we were nearly as far apart as perhaps the owners did, but that I think it's clear now, after the positions the players took today, um, that there doesn't seem to be very much room, certainly not unbridgeable room, and we think that the positions that the players took today are a clear outline to how to end this particular dispute. I'm not going to go into tremendous detail about that. I'll simply say as follows. As a result of some things which came up in the discussion this week and with the players' response today, we believe and we hope we have an agreement on pension plan for the players, which will be funded out of player money. Players are paying for it, but we have an agreement on it. That's a good thing. We believe that we have an agreement on what we call the transition payments, um, which came out of what the owners called the make whole proposal a number of weeks ago. We believe that that issue is or should be resolved. In connection with the term of the agreement, and you know that the party started out, if my memory serves me right, at four and five, and uh, uh, the owner's position has been looking for a progressively longer agreement as the time has gone on. Um, players thought about that a lot. It's a tough issue that for them for a number of different reasons. But the proposal that they made today in an effort to close this and end it was an eight-year agreement with, a, with an opt-out for the players after year six. In terms of the player contracting issues, the remaining issues are primarily maximum length of an individual contract and what we call variability, that is to say how much the year-to-year -year compensation numbers uh, may differ. It's obviously an, an important issue for the players because depending on how that's done, it affects um, available cap space, which affects the amount of room that um, players will have to sign contracts. It affects the number of teams that may offer contracts to players and so on and so forth. Um, what we proposed today, which was a significant move from our prior position, was that the maximum length would be that you could not be under contract for, for a period of time for more than eight years, that that would be the maximum, that on variability, that if you have a contract of seven years um, or longer, which in this world that we've proposed would be a seven-year contract or an eight-year contract, we would utilize the existing uh, variability rules subject to a further one that the lowest year of the contract could not be, must be at least 25% of the highest year of the contract. That is a structure which was most recently agreed upon in the Pittsburgh Crosby contract. I think most recently agreed upon. Um, We have made proposals for what we call the cap benefit recapture, what the owners have called the long-term backdiving contract problem, which we believe should solve all of those issues um, without question. Short answer is if the player does not perform in any years of the contract when he's otherwise fit to play, we recompute what the cap benefit the club got was by averaging those in, and then the club has that cap charge over the remaining years of the contract. Um, we have not discussed with the owners yet what are transition issues or transition rules. That is to say you have one system 
and over some period of time we're going to move to a system which is different in many material respects. Um, they've expressed some views about that. We have too. We told them today um, that we need to have that discussion so that we can try and resolve any issues which divide us if there are such issues. Um, that's a discussion which has yet to be held. Um, so where does that put us in, in, in simple terms? But for any transition issues which we need to discuss, we think there is a complete agreement on dollars. If that's the case, and we think it is, there wouldn't seem to be very much reason why we shouldn't be able to conclude an agreement in the near term. And we certainly expect and hope that that turns out to be the case. Second, um, you know what a lot of the owners' positions have been, and in many of those cases we've moved very substantially in their direction. So that is where we are today. Um, they heard this proposal to representatives from the owners, uh, Bob Batterman and Bill Daly, and we expect that they will be discussing it with their principals and they'll get back to us. We don't know when that will be. Okay. If there are questions, a few brief ones, I'll try and answer them. Not directly, no. I mean, uh, a number of the owners that were here apparently are not here. Uh, but as to say, not in New York. Um, and the only thing that was indicated to us was that they had been, Bill and Bob had been delegated to hear our response and report back. Don, uh, can you characterize where we are now in the talks for hockey fans back in Canada or wonder? I think I just did that. I can try and do it again. How close? We believe that with the exception of the transition issues which have not been discussed, um, except in the most general terms and without any dollar figures attached to them, that we have a complete agreement on dollars. We've moved very substantially in the owner's direction on things like contract length and variability and term of agreement, and we hope and believe and expect that this should put us on the road to a quick end to this dispute. We will see. What to allow this to happen? Is this group remaining here in anticipation of getting a response from the league, or are you expecting that? Well, we, we will wait and see uh, what they say and when they say it, and uh, uh, players will make their own judgments about timing and, and all the rest of it. But we'll be prepared to meet with them when they are. Tom, what's your sense of what changing the dynamic maybe did for these talks, just different voices? Or how I'm, I'm not going to characterize that. I think that's a judgment that is best made after the process is over and you can look back on it. Don, is it fair to say that the five-year contract limit that the league wants, that's a major standard point? Hence your counter with eight Yes. Are you disappointed that the owners weren't here today, or does it not? Not going to comment on that. You know, they're entitled to have their representatives. We're entitled to have ours. You have to make your own judgments. Don, was there any reaction from Bill or Bob when the proposal was You'll need to ask them about the reaction. Don, what are the players getting out of this agreement, and what does this say, this proposal say? From the beginning of this process, um, this has been one in which the players were asked to and expected to make, to make major economic and other concessions to the owners. Um, if I am right that we finally have an agreement on a pension plan, that is something that's important, and we're glad we have that agreement, and we hope we can go ahead and finalize it and put it in place. I would caution you that's being paid for by the players. It's not being paid for by the owners. doesn't mean it's a bad thing. It's a good thing. That's being paid for by the players. Um, beyond that, you'll have to make your own judgment. Wait, 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 wait. Has there been wait, wait, what? Best case scenario, when are we back to uh, playing? If we can get the positive response and conclude this, I hope it doesn't take very long. I haven't counted days. All so ongoing things have been discussed? When, when I'm sorry. Back? Not specifically, no. All along I, I make the assumption that if we get an agreement, everybody will turn themselves inside out to turn it around as fast as possible. If that's wrong, we're in bigger trouble than even I think we are. <laughs> Sorry to interrupt. Uh, you talked about the owners not being willing to move. Um, as of last I week, don't know that I used that phrase today, well, but go ahead. 
Sure, but up until last night, um, did that change? Did, did your opinion of that change after last night? Was you know, the offer that was on the table last night? Was well, there were. Point? Sorry, I interrupted you now. Uh, um, the discussions the last several days, as had been before, uh, produced some movement on some issues, and the players responded, and they've responded further today. I really don't want to get into the specifics or categorize it beyond that. Have, have, have you guys talked seriously about having a vote on any of the proposals today? There'll be a vote when there's a, a proposed agreement, and anything else that would go back to the membership in terms of a vote, the executive board would have to decide on. And in the ordinary course of events, you, you, um, that's not something you would ordinarily do. Yeah. Uh, is it possible there could be an agreement as early as tomorrow or, or that Sure, sure would be nice. Is it, is it feasible? Is that feasible or is that too much to expect? Um, I'm out of the expectations and predictions game. <laughs> have, have the players gone as far as they're willing to go? I, the players have gone a very, very long way. Is, is there more room to go? You know. I'm not going to comment on that except to say that given the economics, given the player contracting <coughs> issues, given the other things, the players have done far and away the lion's share of the movement here. What's your biggest concern with going to a 10-year length of a CBA? A 10-year length uh, of a CBA? 10, ten years, sorry. Well, there, there, there are two or three concerns, uh, one of which is an ethical or a philosophical one which is to say by the time you get to year five or year six, a majority of the players playing will never have voted on an agreement. They never will have participated in the process. They will never have had the rights that union representation is supposed to give them to have a say in their terms and conditions of employment. By the time you get to two years, you have two or more generations of players. Um, and so that's a problem. Secondly, I was about to say our ability, but anybody's ability to predict the economics and all the rest of it goes down pretty far after you go out uh, a certain number of years. Um, ten years strikes us as much too far to be able to make any reasonable predictions. Do you think it will be contentious, the transition rules, or is that... One would hope not. How long would that discussion take, do you envision? Don't know. We have to be at the place where we have the discussion first. And are they unwilling to have it? What is the holdup? Which well, there, there's two issues there. You know, the first one is... Um, uh, do you get to a matter of implementing an agreement before you have an agreement? I guess that's one issue. Before you have an agreement that you're trying to figure out how to implement. That's pretty difficult. Okay, maybe one more. Tom, uh, you, you said that there's, uh, I think there's a deal on dollars. Um, obviously the With the exception of, of the transition issues, which yes. have not been discussed. Yes. Uh, I guess the make whole is part of that. Uh, yeah, what we call the transition payments. Yes, that's correct. At least we believe there is an that there is or should be an agreement on that. And, and my understanding from last night, it moved to three hundred million dollars. I'm not going to comment on the specifics. Thank you, <coughs> Don. Just the, in '94, '95, when the lockout ended, the game started again, but the actual <coughs> contract wasn't signed. I think until August that year. Could you envision a scenario in which the game would start and a, and a contract wouldn't actually and things would get worked out as it went along? Well, let me. First of all, are you referring to the hockey dispute? Yes. Okay. I don't know what happened in, in terms of that in, in hockey. That's okay. Um, so, but that is not an unusual circumstance where you reach agreement, you do run up so you have a memorandum of understanding, right. everybody understands what the situation is, and you put everybody back to work while you fine-tune the details and, and have it fly spec by, by council. John, is, is it not an advantage to I, I, I've answered that in any number of times, but you know, by by that logic, you could say have a 27-year agreement. Yeah. Okay. And at that point, you have no idea what the industry is going to look like, what the conditions are, what the problems or successes that are that people are going to have, whatever issues might arise. There's a reason that almost all collective bargaining agreements are reasonably short, and that's because things change, and you need to look at them. You can't predict the economics. Five years is a long time. Six years to eight years is a much longer time. So, best I can tell you. I'll let, I'll let you make your own judgments about that. I thought you guys enjoyed covering this. I'm wrong. <laughs> <laughs> it's not right. Scott, in trying to also, through this 
field kind of break the cycle that has affected hockey in the lockout cycle? What mechanisms in, this, in your proposal or if anything do you think? What, what I had hoped was that we would be able to have a process which would break the lockout first and ask questions later method of operation which seems to have infected hockey and basketball and football for the last 10 or 15 years. Um, and I would hope that when this agreement is eventually concluded, assuming that it is, um, that there would be something which grows out of this experience which would have a therapeutic effect and break that cycle. Um, I don't think we'll know whether that's the case until we get there. No, but this one, you're not characterizing this as talks breaking off. They're just going back to review. I have not characterized it that way. Would you, or is, that's not the case? What do you characterize? How would you characterize? No, about all I can, about all I can characterize it as is what I said. We made the proposal. We were with people um, who were told they were designated to receive it and carry it back. They have received it. I assume they've carried it back, and it's being discussed. And I don't know what they're going to do on the other side. I will tell you this, if you don't have discussions, it's pretty hard to reach an agreement. So hopefully that won't be the case. Do you expect the players to stay in the meeting again? That the, there will be an appropriate committee available when we need to meet. Can we go and have dinner tonight or do we have to stick around? <laughs> I'm not going to tell anybody not to eat. Okay? All right, thanks, guys. <laughs> So we're going to, right leave now, no. the players are going to do, uh, they're available for scrums. That's going to be respectful. Obviously, you don't have a team. Well, hi again, everybody. Uh, I'll wait for you guys. I did not expect to be down here uh, again tonight or certainly um, this fast. Uh, there has been a development. Um, it's not a positive one. Uh, we were advised in a, uh, um, a voicemail message that the uh, moves the players made were not acceptable that there was no reason to stay around for meetings tonight or tomorrow, that they would be in touch, and that um, something, everything that's not clear is off the table. We don't know what that means. Uh, well, you know, we'll figure it out at some point, uh, I suppose. So if the question is, what can I tell that somebody over here asked me before or who was over here when I was here before, um, what can we tell the hockey fans of Canada? I think um, you can tell them. Uh, that it looks like this is not going to be resolved in the immediate future. I hope that turns out to be wrong, but that's certainly what the message is that uh, we have today. And that's notwithstanding the fact that we are clearly very close, if not on top of one another, in connection with most of the major issues. I don't know when discussions will resume. You know, they indicated that they'll get back to us, so I assume that at some point in due course they will. Um, and in the meantime, what we'll do the rest of the evening is advise the membership of uh, what the situation is. Don, you mentioned that the owners indicated that something or everything might be off the table. Will you suggest to your constituency that... I'm not, go I'm not going to discuss what we're going to do until I talk to them. I think I think I owe it to them first, and we'll find out what the situation is. I'm sorry. I was from Bill to Steve, normal communication. Don, has the, has the league characterized the, 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 the closeness that you've had, that, that you say you're, you're close? Has the league expressed that as well to you, that they think that you're as close to a deal as... as they don't disagree with it. What, what they've said is that we haven't agreed to everything they've suggested yet. Does this come as a, a surprise? <coughs> I'm not going to, I don't get into the surprise. It comes as a disappointment, obviously. Don, are they, are they disputing that you have agreed on what you believe you have agreed? I don't know anything more than what I told you. 
given this, do you feel like you can negotiate a deal with them? Well, sooner or later one would think so, but certainly we can't tonight. Or tomorrow, apparently. Don, what's, what's your next move? Just waiting? or is something No, the next move is to talk to the membership. Educate them, tell them what's going on, and uh, uh, to figure out what we do from there. That's not a matter that I feel comfortable with or that you should expect me to discuss in this forum. Could you clarify, you said everything's off the table, they're saying? We, we don't know. We don't know what that means. But what did they say exactly? Sorry, what did they say? It was that some things or everything are off the table. We can call for clarification if we want. So Don, we'll see. Don, is decertification a, a, an option that would be... As I've said before, decertification or a disclaimer is an option that any union has in the circumstances, but I'm not going to discuss whether or to what extent players have considered it. Did you or see will. clarification before coming back to address us? No. Did they give you an answer on your mediation request? And I don't think there's been a further answer, no. I don't think they dispute that we had requested it and that they had not agreed to it the last couple of days, but I don't think there's been a further response. Do you have a clue, do you have a clue of which point they find most objectionable at this stage? There was no specific comment on that. How much has this hurt uh, the trust between uh, the, two, uh, the two sides? Um, when you're engaged in a process like this, um, I don't think it's helpful to characterize questions like that. Um, you got to figure out a way to reach an agreement if one is possible. I don't know. I hope it's not. Well, in the course of labor negotiations, is you know rejecting a proposal via voicemail common practice? Is, it, is that something that's? Oh, I'm, I'm sure it happens or it doesn't happen. But they'd indicated they would get back to us tonight. And when we say voicemail, what that means is no one was there to answer the call. Is that because you were in here? <laughs> yes. Well, I don't, actually, I don't know where my brother was at the time. The call came to him. I was. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right. Thank you.